trying to fish with floating bread but keep missing bites today we've got some tips to get more fish in your net and onto that line let's get it Hi and welcome to Angling View. And today, joining me fishing, floating bread on the pole. Now, it's not something that I, uh, I do very often, but I'm <laughs> getting countless and countless amount of people asking me how I fish floating bread. And we've got a pole today to show you how to, uh, the, the, my most effective way. But we've also got a rod set up, which we will show you also how to catch and how simple it is and the, the little <laughs> nice little ghost to start the thing is about floating bread is there's two things that, that people get wrong well, there's, there's a few things but the, the main two are they don't feed or they feed wrongly and the rig that they actually the way they hook the bait itself both of those usually what I find wrong about when with the people fishing floating bread. What I'll do is I'll go into it close up to camera, but I'm going to talk about it while I'm also baiting up. Now, when you get the bread, there's only one bread that I get and that's Warbit and Toasty. It's just the, the way it is, it's just so soft. Now, people go with massive pieces of bread and that is the first thing that's wrong. So I've got a tiny, small piece of bread. You've got to think, if you've got a carp that's eating that piece of bread, you want them to get that hook just as well as you want them to get that bread. So you've got a piece of massive bread, then they're going to be eating all the bread before they get to that hook. You might hook them on the odd occasion. Now, what I've done is put them on a bait band, and again, I'll show you this in close, and I nip just one end of it to put in the band, like so. And that's the simplicity of it. It's banded there and they suck that bait in and, and they're on and it's, it, it saves you missing so many fish. And I do the exact same when I fish it on the, on the waggler or the bubble float or whatever you, you fish shallow. That's the biggest, the biggest thing that people do wrong is the way they hook it. I'm not saying that, other, that every, every other way is wrong and I'm the only one that's right, I'm saying You'll catch a lot more fish if you hook it this way, I'm telling you now. And you'll lose l far less than if you've got it in a big piece of uh, big piece of bread. The other thing is to feed. Now, people think maybe put, just putting bread out, but I like to use floating dog biscuits. Two reasons. One, it attracts the fish into the swim. And two, it also acts as another hook bait that you can move on to later on in the session if you don't feel that they're taking the bread. Now, as you can see from what we're doing, there's no floats or nothing on this rig. It's just a piece of line. It's around three foot um, to a size 12 KKMB uh, and a band. And it's, it's, it really is that simple. Oh, 
Right guys, we're into a little fishing. You see how easy that is? It's just takes the elastic, no problems. It's just so close to everything on the band that it, it rarely misses. Not a particularly big fish either, which proves even more so that that smaller bit of bread can even up the smaller fish. Put it on that really nice little light garbo elastic, um, which if you watch the Tom's Pond feature we were fishing with on there as well. Just a nice little elastic to fish with when you're fishing for fish of a stamp of this sort of stamp. It's um, it's what you what you want really. You don't want to be fishing with anything uh, anything heavier. And uh, I've got the this one's around what the stamp we we're catching. This little car, feisty as always. Let's get him back. And what we're going to do is uh, move on to fishing it with the waggler, see what it's like on the waggler and the differences that we, we adopt to uh, get the same uh, results and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have a few more. Right guys, so we've gone through how we're fishing to start off with on the pole. Uh, we're going to go onto the rod a little bit later on, but I want to show you how simple this is and how simple this rig is. So we've got an eight uh, gabolino hollow on there and that's purely just it's the, the fish are only usually up to about three pound and um, that you catch on average you will catch there's some donkeys in here but the chances of hooking them they're, they're quite wise when it comes to shallow uh, fishing are on the surface so we've got 015 mainline and that is just straight through it's just one rig so the hook down here is a kkmb size 12 and we've got about two and a half foot three foot maybe of line and the hook with a band that is it it's that simple um i can't get over it it's just like tiny nut link but making it a really long one instead of it being a short one that that's pretty much as easy as i can possibly um suggest that it is what i'm going to do is i'm just going to flip real quick to a, some close-up and i'll show you the bread uh how we how we put it on and that might make it a little bit more into why it's so successful of hooking up now the bread we use we, we talked about it earlier on um it's warburton's toasty i always like the toasties it's just a little bit more soft i think the thick's too thick the medium's too thin the toast is just perfect for what we're doing either the big loaves or the little loaves i like the, those little ones because they're plastic and you can roll them up so yeah that it, dead easy and uh, easy to bring on a bank with you so what i'll do is i'll zoom in now to the hook and we will put that bait on and show you how simple but effective that is right guys so the first thing that you need is a bait bander this is just a cheap one you can get loads of different makes and models um out there and so i see some people and they put a full slice of bread on which is absolutely insane i see them fold it in half and up through and then up through and up through crazy nuts don't need that what you want to do is take a little bit of not the crust the uh, the fluffy part right I'll put this bit behind me and it's not even not even that much is is too big um what you want to do is just break off around that sort of size just just bigger than a 20p um and just roll gently one of the edges keep the rest of it fluffy but just roll one of the edges and that's going to allow you to then put your baiting needle through the band as you normally would like so and then just going to put that bit in there and that is it you're banded so the hook is there they slurp from that angle they pull in that bait and it pulls your hook in and you're away it's as simple as that and there's no messing about no fiddling no sort of you will miss bites inevitably but more chance of hooking and can keeping fish on doing it that way and you'll find you'll put a lot more fish in the net and you'll certainly see when we go on to the fishing it on the on the on the rod uh, how effective it is so uh I'll join me back and we will give this out and see if we can catch some fish a caught on the pole um now you join me with the wag 
and we'll show you with the bread how we're going to catch on the wag. So this is a gabolino bullet, can't match, a uh, little gabolino rod, I know, which I got for 20 quid actually, it's ten, just over 10 foot, it's great, great little rod for this. Um, if you watch my 20 pound challenge you'll have seen I've got a gabolino reel and a rod for a tenner, so I've got that little rear drag reel on it with it as well. And uh, we're going to continue the same scenario that we're doing uh, on the pole. We'll show you in detail, but we're hooking it the exact same way. Uh, the line we've got around three foot and maybe just over of line um, to a, a little crystal waggler on some uh, pole, some float stops. and. Uh, I've only got four pound midi M tech line, which is ample for, for what we're doing. Just throwing that out there, and straight away that, that fish took that instantly as it hit the water. So perfect. Didn't even have time to uh, to to tighten up, and it uh, got a few fish out there now. I'm just again still feeding those dog biscuits. I was just about to pick up and feed some dog biscuits then. And uh, that one took it straight away, little mirror. This is where your longer landing nets handles come in, in use. Took that one as soon as it hit the water. So, I'm just getting one up. He's just pulled the hook into the net, which is always helpful. Just get him out. And we'll give another little cast. We'll fire some bait in first. And uh, we'll get some... Uh, I'll put some more bread on. Now, with the float you can see, I've got a little rest in front of me. And I, I always find it really useful to have a rest uh, when you're fishing a pellet waggler or whether you're fishing um, a, a sort of wag like this with a, a floating bait or just even a waggle in general to be fair and uh, it just allows me to control what I'm doing so if I'm firing I can just sit that on there and it sits against that last eye so it doesn't pull off the rest if I get a bite again I'm just nipping that on with a band I'm just gonna just before I put this out I'm gonna put a, a pouch a couple of pouches of uh, my biscuits out So again what we're trying to do is get into that sort of area that we've just fired. Just going to wind that float back a little bit. I just want that to be taut. That's nice, that's that nice now. And I've got that, I'm going to have it on my rest. The tip's low to the, to the ground, it's easy to, to, to pick up. And then it allows me to, to put a few few biscuits in around it. Which is perfect, just a couple of biscuits around that. It's like anything that we do, um, and I show you on the channel, it's just about trying to be methodical and, and doing it to the best of your ability. Um, I, you don't always need to have thick lines and, you know, heavy hooks and things like that. We've got, we've got a size, we've got a size 12 hook on this time, uh, which is not, now with these modern hooks, it's not... It's not a super lot, uh, large hook, obviously it's like something I'd use for paste. You do need, you can't go, you can go, but you wouldn't go super small. Um, but uh, it uh, just allows you to get that hook hold, but you don't need a gaff like you see some people use, and you don't need a, a, a massive piece of bread, like I was saying to you before, the smaller the piece of bread. 
more likely the fishes to suck it in and, and your hook as well I went into a fish straight away that went <laughs> just saw that fish swirl out there, only a little fish this one I just saw it swirl and cast on top of it and it uh, went straight away just, just a little smaller carp this time Even these little ones, <laughs> they, uh, they're definitely fine. Pull a little bit of line out. That's what I'm saying. It, you see, I see people come here with massive rods, and the things is thing is when you you're casting a rod, if you've got light line and a light float or, or medium sized float with a bit of weight that's proportionate to it you're going to end up casting a lighter rod you end up casting it a lot neater and a lot more accurately than if you've got a, a, an heavy rod and heavy line and then a, a, a light set up in regards to float and not much weight that's where people struggle and that's when you end up getting balloon tangles with your line because your line's too heavy for what you for for what you're using and it's uh, it just puts you in all sorts of of hassle and you don't need that when you when you're fishing a wag you just nice and light this this setup like i said i, I picked this up, up on offer 20 quid it's perfect for this kind of thing short chucks waggler fishing either fishing like this or even just generalized waggler fishing um or pellet waggler fishing for carp you know, it's it's a great little rod. Don't need to be messing about, and n no asshole whatsoever. And like I say, that these carp, that usually only little carp, and um, that's in here. There's big carp. There is big carp, and um, there is very big carp in here, up into high doubles. But most of the time, you're after these sort of one to three, four pound carp. Um, and you don't need to have stupid gear for that although a lot of people do and just the way that we put that on and we attach it and we band the bread just means that you lose a lot less fish and you get a lot more hookups and at the end of the day that that's that's what you're wanting to do you want to maximize the chances you get to put more fish in now let's have a look at this um this rig in a little bit more detail so the rod, like I was saying, is a carp, uh, Gablino carp match bullet, and it is 10.2 uh, um, feet. Nice little cork handle. You just can't go wrong. Honestly, it, it's such a nice little light, stiff, got lovely action through it. 20 quid. I mean, can, can I say any more? I mean, I got it for four, uh, it's, they're on there about 40 odd quid, but 20 quid. I, I'm not complaining for, for this kind of stuff. Would it, would it be my major match? Waggler that I'd use, no, but for these kind of venues, it's perfect. Um, so, like I said, 10 foot, got that little gabbling reel we did on the 20 pound challenge, rear drag, four pound and mid M tech line, really nice and light setup. So, the rig itself is very similar to the one you've just seen on the pole rig, um, it, but obviously the difference is it's got a float. So, obviously we've got a classic 2BB loaded um, crystal waggler and that no shot that's just enough for that to get casted out and then we've got probably a two inch there of it allowed to slide around with a quick two of the feeder beads or float stop beads either side and that's just so I can use uh, adapt the length of the tag that I want so about 10 inches from that we've got the hook link and the hook link is 014 and that's all the way down to a size 12 kk and b with a bait band and it is that simple it really is that simple and you can adjust uh your your length of of throw we've got around four about three and a half foot away from the float and that just allows you to just gently tighten up and bring it back to where you're feeding and makes it really simple and easy to hook those fish now what we've done 
with the line here we've gone through with a little bit of vaseline or bristle grease the whole way across that and that just allows that to stay on the top of the surface of water so it doesn't bow under the water uh, and run into any fish that are swimming underneath uh, the early surface and, and, and spook them away from where your bait is and uh, that's just a really quick and easy tip to keep that that uh, line on the top flowing um, and that's it really uh, we'll jump back onto camera we'll see if we can have some more uh, obviously we've, we've had a few on a pole and um, like I said the rig itself is is pretty much the same up until you get to the float end where it's looped to looped and other than that is absolutely identical so let's get back to it and see if we can catch some more got the and you've got the float like that you can see that float disappear and it makes it a lot easier for you to to not miss bites and see so, I mean that, that's three fish on the bounce and you know you're not missing those bites because they're just sucking that bread in and they're sucking that hook in as well and it's that easy, it really is. It really is that easy. It's a little bit bigger stamp on this one. Like I say, nothing, nothing massive. Nothing massive. Um, I'll just come out in the net. Might not, stay. Might not play ball. <laughs> it's a bit giddy. And you know, it's a nice little fish. It is, the, it is one of those sort of things that people don't necessarily get on with in regards to they don't like. There's a lot of a lot of stigma behind it that people, there's certain people that can't that fish it, and it's the ones that throw frisbees of slices of bread and things like that, and that spoil it for the rest of the other people. It's not it's not something like that it can be done delicately it can be done effectively and it can be done in a way that's really really devastating but it's just knowing those little steps rather than you've seen that I've not thrown in tons of bread there's not bread all over the place I've fed pellets and we're catching fish regularly and not missing bites and there's not loads of bread floating around into other people's pegs and stuff like that that's where it gets that's what gets it banned on many menus so well, i hope this has been a, a good video for you and, and it's shown you a little bit of variety with the pole and the the rod uh, i was going to do a little bit with the pellet the dog biscuit but i've kept it to bread because that's what i keep getting asked about because that's where people it's easy to ban a, a dog biscuit and people tend to have more problems with the bread hence all these questions that i keep getting asked um, so hopefully the little tips will aid you in getting uh, those more fish into those nets and and not missing as many bites so uh, thank you very much for joining us as always um, it's always a pleasure to answer the questions and, and try and bring content that that's been asked by members or, or subscribers um, and then it, it's obviously a great feeling for you guys watching them when they've been they've been made so join us on the YouTube with a playlist check out there's tons of different things on there if you wanting to find reviews or you want to find features or you, different methods they're all on different playlists and it allows you to find them and watch what you want to watch um, as easily as possible 
and uh, if you join us on the Facebook group at Angling For You, obviously there's it's a big community of around 3,000 uh, members on there where we can you all chat. We have regular live feeds uh, from the bank and lots of interaction on there. And again, if you're just into the photos and you, you only want to do the photos, go onto the Instagram at Angling Underscore For You and you can join us on there and uh, share your photos with everybody else. So until the next one, guys, thanks very much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. And thanks a lot. Tight lines.